Not very long ago, 60% of Haiti was covered with trees. Today, all but 2% of the forests are gone. Once, Haiti was self-sufficient in food, but as a result of uncontrolled logging and extreme soil erosion, food production could not keep up with demand. Soon, Haiti became the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere. Millions lived in slums. Sanitation and healthcare were almost non-existent. And local gangs forced residents to pay exorbitant prices for clean water. Eventually, political alienation and environmental stresses led to frustration and then anger. What does Haiti mean? Well, one thing it means is it shows how uh, you get this nexus of forces, uh, this interplay of forces uh, of environmental degradation, population pressures, uh, and political instability. You have to think of environmental stress as kind of an underlying pressure, almost a tectonic stress within the society that increases the likelihood of violence but doesn't necessarily cause it by itself. It has to, it has to come with other things such as weak governments, availability of weapons, and also deep ethnic cleavages within a society that can make violence more likely. And then all of a sudden you get a dramatic outbreak of riots in the streets. We saw the effect of this when world grain prices tripled in late 2007, early 2008. Because Haiti could not get enough food, violent protests forced the president to resign. Today, as Haiti tries to recover from a deadly earthquake, the reality is still bleak. No matter how much disaster relief the country receives, renewal can only come when Haiti becomes strong enough to address the environmental challenges that still plague the countryside. In rural parts of Haiti, there's a long tradition of burying a baby's umbilical cord under a tree. This ritual has always strengthened a family's sense of belonging and its attachment to the land. But what will happen when there are no more trees? Will Haitians lose their deep connection to the land? But on a more global scale, what I worry about is that the weaker and poorer countries of the world, all those teetering on the edge of becoming failed states, won't be able to cope with the mounting problems of climate change, water shortages and food shortages. One of the great paradoxes of climate change is that the nations that will suffer most are the ones that are already least capable of contending with the change, that is, the poorest nations of the earth, in terms of the food, resources, water, agriculture, uh, a geometrically increasing population. I sort of sense that we're at about that threshold right now.